everybody, and welcome to the Laying Lines podcast. This is the final episode of season one, and I'm cutting season one short due to personal matters, and I'm trying to drop some of my projects off of my plate for the time being while I work on two writing projects, and if you didn't know, Aside from being a podcaster, I also write books, and they can all be found on Amazon under Caleb, capital D, Walker, or Caleb, lowercase d, Walker. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, Due to my inexperience, I have books listed under both of those, but... Over time, I have learned, and I have gotten better and made everything a little more formal. It's just with the way Amazon is, I can't go back and fix it. Now, as to where I've been gone, I have a whole bunch of personal stuff that came up and took up a whole bunch of my time, one of which being the birth of my child. And I wasn't going to put that all aside just to make a podcast because that's not important to me. I don't make money off of this. But with all of that being said, I will bring this back in the uh, spring, like late spring, early summer of next year. And... I am hopefully going to have a bit more to add to this podcast when that time does come, but for this episode, I want to talk about the entirety, and I mean this in all seriousness, the entirety of the main Five Nights at Freddy's uh, book series. Now, I'm sure everybody knows exactly what Five Nights at Freddy's is. If they don't know Five Nights at Freddy's, they know the way the characters look and everything. And my first experience is probably the same as everybody else's. And it's probably the only experience that a lot of people have with the series. With that being said, it's... It's a really good book series for what it is, and for it being marketed towards children, it's an absolutely terrifying book. And the first one is probably the scariest for me, and if I were to rank them, I would do it the same way that they were published, one, two, and three. I really enjoyed book one and book two, but to me, book three left a little bit to be desired, and it ended on a bit of a cliffhanger that I think could have been solved with another book, but by the time the book came out, and the third book in the series came out, people were canceling Scott. I I, I don't know why, but they were. And by the time the third book was coming out, Five Nights at Freddy's had started to slow down and slow down and slow down. But with the resurgence of Five Nights at Freddy's and with uh, Sony buying the ability to make a game for it, well, I, I think it was Sony. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. But I do know that the series got bought out and it changed hands and the newest, the newest Five Nights at Freddy's game is not made by Scott. So it's not made by the original person that did the series. But with that being said, the books like Silver Eyes, Twisted Ones, and The Fourth Closet are all, they're all part of the main continuity of the games, which by that I mean game one all the way to Sister Location. So, not 
Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. But if I remember right, they follow a girl named Samantha whose dad, yeah, her dad was the one that made the animatronics. And so she lived around them constantly and he would make toys for her and stuff like that. And it was him and Afton that formed the original idea of it all and then Afton stole the idea and ran with it and it gets into like this really cool like cover up story of kids that have gone missing and everything and then the main character gets hunted down by animatronics and then it all ties in it all ties in with sister location and the idea of a restaurant that existed before Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. And then it gets into like this really cool like high tech shit and I really I liked it. And the books take place after the original restaurant was shut down. So it takes place after Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and before Sister Location, I believe. And I like it because I like it when video games have stuff that, act that actually add to the lore of the stories. And I like it also because the first book actually gave me chills. Like, it gave me chills, and I remember it very, very well. And I think that if a kid were to want to get into horror, I think that the books, the books themselves would be a good place to start with literature that focuses around horror because they managed to make it really, really scary but they also managed to keep it really, really, really kid-friendly. And I like that about it because it knew where it was allowed to go and where it wasn't allowed to go and how far it was allowed to push it. And it did it without being cheesy. Like, it, it did it without being the normal type of cheesy that a lot of kids' stuff is. And I was really appreciative of it because me being an older person in the audience that really enjoys the video games and the world that it was forming, I liked that I was able to read it and not feel weird about reading it. And a lot of kids stuff, like things that focus around kids, a lot of it gets really weird and really cheesy and I hate it with a passion in my heart. Because it's kind of like an adult is going to be around a kid constantly. And there's going to be adults that get into dealing with the kid stuff. Like they get curious and they're like, I wonder what this is going to be like. And then they go to look at it or go to read it and it's bad. It's kind of like the reboot for Teen Titans or the reboot for Looney Tunes or the reboot for Ben 10. Like, stuff like that where it gets, like, it gets overly protective, overly eggshelly. It's just, it's really weird. And I don't like it. But this manages to, it, it sits there on the same level as Goosebumps. But without being campy and, like, really dated. Because I, I personally think that Goosebumps is probably going to be really dated now because that was like a late 90s, late 80s, early 2000s type thing where it had the really old classic style of horror. But my other thing is that Scott Cawthon was actually involved in writing the books. It's not like Star Wars where it's like we're not going to consult the original person that came up with this idea in the first place. It's one of those things where it's like, Scott's actually on the front of the book and actively was talking about the project and stuff like that. And I'm going to be honest, I, I, I miss 
I miss having Scott on the scene with video games and stuff because I really enjoyed having that feeling of mystery that he would throw into the video games where he'd share teasers and there were like little videos and stuff like that where it, was, it gave you an idea of what you would be expecting but it didn't show too much to the point where it was kind of like I know exactly what's going to happen here like most triple a games are now and i feel like if he was involved with security breach it wouldn't have been as bad or as disconnected as it was and to add in to the world the books kind of like they gave a view from outside in the books didn't revolve around somebody that was working at the restaurant. It didn't revolve around somebody that was stuck in the restaurant. It was somebody trying to figure out some of the stuff that they don't know about their past. And they were on a search with it. And then it kind of wove the characters into this narrative and kind of gave them a connection to the main character of the book. And it was... It was nice. It was a good relief, and it was, I, I personally think it was a great addition to the series itself, and it kind of hurts that not many people know about it, and not a, people, not a lot of people enjoy it, but with the way that it weaves the characters together, it does a really good job at keeping the idea of how scary these characters were to these people that already had an idea of who they were and what they were when the video games came out. And to be honest, the scariest thing out of the entire book is something that I could picture being in a movie or in a video game or something because the description that these books give you of the events, it's just it's beautiful. It's kind of like a... Um, it's kind of like a painting. They're, they kind of paint a picture, and it does a really good job at it. Sorry. But the way, the way things are depicted, it's, how do I put it? It, like, it doesn't skip out on any sort of description. They get the smell, the sights. Uh, I don't I don't think they ever describe the taste. But it really captures the idea of every single abandoned building I have ever been in in my entire life. And my biggest debate on doing these books is they're old enough that if I wanted to, I could do a spoiler episode about it. But I really didn't want to because I think that if you like Five Nights at Freddy's, that you should check out the books because they add a different feeling to the games. And they have these... Um, they have these short stories out now, and I haven't read them personally, and I plan on reading them, but I don't know how I would feel about reading something without the original creator of the whole thing being involved, mostly because when you have the creator of the thing involved it it kind of makes it all better and that's because you have the original source of the material there so you can't you can't fuck it up you can't fuck it up you can't mess up if the guy that is creating the thing is there and it it kind of loses the spark or the luster that it does and where these three books had a cohesive A to B story it kind of makes it hard to want to go read an anthology 
or a short story collection about the same subject. And it's just, it's got some sort of like little poetic idea, poetic justice about it. But I know this episode was shorter, but I had to get something out. And I might go back and make a spoiler episode about this. But thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed.